inclusion and diversity in every part of the organization. We embrace it from the fact that it's not the job of the CEO, it's not the job of the senior management, it's not the job of human resources or the chief diversity officer. It's from everybody across the organization. And that means also that we are changing our behaviors, our mindset, our way of doing business. We are becoming inclusive in the sense that everybody has the right to speak up, everybody has the right to share an idea, everybody is respected, no matter the religion, the belief, the sexual orientation, who they love, what they believe, how they look like, how they speak, doesn't matter. You are part of this great, amazing company that allows you to contribute to succeed and in the meantime do something for society and what links us together i mean at the end of the day imagine imagine that you are in a company where you have men women people from all backgrounds from all ideologies from all sexual orientation don't you think that we would be in a better position to serve the consumers and the markets and provide products that are focused on the needs of the people, I mean, we cannot ignore diversity. The most, I mean, we have to be inclusive. The world is diverse. That's the constant. We are diverse. And if the companies are not taking in consideration that, well, it's a big miss. Because it's a no-brainer. I always say that companies have to, you know, it, it is the right thing to do, to do inclusion and diversity, but it's not just that. It's good business. It's good business because otherwise, we are not having the representation of the market. And, and that's a fact of life. And if you think about, anybody could guess how, how much of the purchase decisions are done by women in the world? 50%? 70. Okay. 70 percent of the purchase decisions are done by women in the world. Imagine the power that women have in all the companies, in all the industries. There has to have representation. And that's what ties us in the 90 countries, all of these tactical pieces yes. that you say, this is the nitty gritty that makes us work together and, and at the end it's like being a consumer centric organization. That's great. You, you mentioned the contributions to society that wanted to kind of spotlight uh, and uplift, frankly, PMI's involvement in civil society. Can you talk about uh, how you're all involved uh, living those values through civil society organizations like the Festival Diaspora? Absolutely. Yes, and I think that we have the great mission to promote the smoke-free products, right? And this is a great opportunity that we need to accelerate and communicate to the world. But, but we cannot do it alone. I mean, we need to engage in an open and direct dialogue with everyone and civil society is a keystone. I mean, we need to have that conversation. And we understand that we don't expect to have the same points of view. I think that diversity means that you have different opinions, different points of view, right? And we understand that, and that's fine. But what we always say is, in a community, when you belong to a community, you cannot expect everybody to think the same and have the same opinion. But being in a, having a same opinion, a different opinion, doesn't mean that you have to be excluded. And I think that that's the main message. The Festival of the Diaspora talks about belonging. And what we are asking as a company, because our company, that's our industry, that's the problem, that we usually are excluded of the conversation. But how do you exclude from the conversation the, the companies that are serving the consumers, right? We are not asking to trust us. We are asking to vet the science of the products and the technology that being presented 
and make your own decisions based on what we are providing. It's not about being in agreement, but also not being excluded. Yeah, well, I think the whole point of belonging is not to remove people from the table, but add them to the table. Exactly. So close your legs, scoot over, make room. Exactly. Great. <laughs> Speaking of make your room, last question. I would like you to make a pitch. You mentioned that Philip Morris International is employer of choice. I have a future employee that will one day be off of my personal payroll. <laughs> and I would love for you to make a pitch, not only to, to the young women and men in the room, but for people that are looking to do what you've done, which is to have this amazing international career, to, to work in multiple languages on every continent. That sounds pretty exciting. So what's your personal pitch? I would say, I always say this, I think that, uh, I always tell to women, but I would say that it's also for men, is like, speak up, raise your voice, get your seat at the table, you deserve it. Focus on what you are good at. That will make a difference. Never stop learning. Get out of your comfort zone. And remember that you have the right to be included because every one of us is part of this world. Every one of us can make a difference. Every one of us has a lot to give. Therefore, we have the right to be there and have the courage to be there and be present and deliver. That's what I would say. Fantastic. May we all have a healthy sense of entitlement. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Very much. Very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a five-minute break and we'll transition to our next panel.